So today in 10 minutes I will try to explain the very commonly used microservice architecture. So there would be many technology used. I will not go in depth. Uh, but if it interests you, you can find the in depth at concept encoding. So generally let's start with that when any request comes. What happens is let's say load balancer it goes to a load balancer. Okay. Another question comes here is let's say uh, whenever the, you have typed like www.conceptencoding.com okay so how it reached to this load balancer mine load balancer okay so there is something called DNS comes into the picture so DNS multi, uh, where we have is in short multiple hierarchy each node is known as label the first is known as root which is represented as dot and each label the second uh, level is known as TLD top level domain which is generally uh, like different servers like dot edu dot in dot com something and then after that it's like authoritative like uh, here in this case let's say one authoritative is concept encoding uh, dot edu something let's say so like this it goes in a hierarchy so whenever the you first type any request goes to uh, this need to be resolved through DNS uh, system and this authoritative domain system will provide an IP address where ultimately your request get landed to here load balancer so now once you have received a load balancer the another things which you have to understand that region region 1 and there can be multiple region like this so each region has one api gateway okay so the load balancer comes it will pass it request to the API gateway so there are multiple regions each region has the same setup so this load balancer will pass the request to which API gateway in which region that depends upon the configuration okay so now let's say that request goes to this region region 1 and this API gateway will catch it this API gateway do multiple things it has multiple functionality like it has service discovery also it has integration with authorization server okay so why uh, service discovery and authorization server api gateway takes care of it so generally the request which is coming slash api slash let's say order so first it has to also authorize that uh, whoever the client is making the request are they authorized and there is also service discovery service discovery is needed because now let's say that the request is api slash order so means there are multiple microservices here now let's say that i have order microservices order microservices also i have let's say sales microservices there are multiple instances of this one so api gateway has the knowledge that okay this is slash order means i have to pass it to the order so but there are multiple instances so which instance it has to pass okay so sometimes there is also application load balancer are there in front of it each microservices which take care of distributing the traffic to a multiple instance of a microservice so for sales microservices there one uh, one application load balancer in front of it and for order microservice there can also be a one application load balancer so api gateway depending upon this api it knows that okay it has to call this microservice but what is the address of this one so it has to call service discovery and find the address and forward the request to it if it is api slash let's say sales it will take the help from service discovery and 
forward it to an appropriate application load balancer okay now remember that this is also in one of the az availability zone this is one availability zone az okay so there can be multiple region each region can have multiple az this is az1 similarly there can be multiple az's okay so any one of the az goes down definitely the whole system is not down az2 az3 it still comes into the picture okay so now here if you see that ultimately this has your master slave db this is your master and then your slave so there might be some other region region 2 it might have az and that ultimately get have a master slave architecture now here if you see that this master slave also can be have like configure like active active or active passive so active passive means when let's say this region one get request only one is one db is considered as primary and another is considered as disaster recovery dr so if this region is getting a request ultimately it goes to this primary only now let's say generally master is used for write master is used for write and the read which is happen generally right it is happen through either slave or master depend upon your application need for example uh, whenever the data is written to master before it get replicated to slaves there could be some replication gap okay so if you have some scenarios where read can come just after the write then it's better to also do a read from master okay so this is just one scenario how you can do read and write for master slave but in the active passive only one your db uh, this thing master slave is considered as primary another one is disaster recovery means any request which is coming to this api gateway and from this api gateway to application load balancer let's say specific one this microservice and now it's not inserting the data into here so currently it would be linking to this one itself the primary one only okay now in case this db goes down totally okay then what happen is this becomes primary and all the traffic now goes to this and from here also it will move to this so in active passive only one of the db cluster is become primary and another is considered as a, a disaster recovery and yes both generally time to time get sync up with the help of let's say if there are oracle so they have something as oracle golden gate oracle golden gate which helps to replicate the data uh in db which is uh, there across different regions now in the active active generally this is also active this is also taking a traffic read write and this region is also using its own region uh, db master and slave and inserting the data here and through golden gate it will uh, get sync up but this is little more complicated active active because uh, now let's say that here you have written row 1 updated with let's say from s you have changed it to j and similarly in this row 1 also you have changed from s to let's say m now what would happen is uh, when you replicate the data between uh, this db a conflict will come a you are updating it with j and uh, here it is updating with m so there is a conflict so conflict resolution has to be done 
so currently golden gate has the capability to resolve that also another thing which comes into the picture here is how these two microservices communicate with each other so here if you see that uh, this is not as direct straightforward generally we comes when we say that how two microservices communicate with each other we think about synchronous and asynchronous we say that mostly the answer if you uh, uh, this is what i have observed mostly the answer goes to what asynchronous that we will put into the queue the other microservices will read from it but uh, here the interpreter mostly interested in synchronous because there are so many challenges when the microservice one wants to connect with microservice two because you have to take care of like uh, service discovery part what is the address of this second microservice uh, your uh, load balancing you have to uh, distribute the traffic you authorization you have to authorize whether you are authorized to call this application or not then you have like uh, circuit breaker functionality you want like if there is a consistent failure while calling this then you should stop calling it for certain time then also the retry functionality so all these things is generally should be considered when we are making a synchronous call between order to sales uh, so what generally should be done is like it generally happen through service mesh so i've already explained service mesh in depth so you can check the service mesh so service mesh what happen is with each microservices let's say microservice 1 there is a sidecar attached to it so microservices 2 there is a sidecar attached to it and these sidecars talk directly to each other and all the logic of load balancing circuit breaker retry authentication it's present into this sidecars okay so microservices is now only for your business logic and this sidecars is generally configured through the control plane control plane okay 